Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ They, there are a group of people who wish to extinguish the light of Allah using their mouths. وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ Allah will definitely, categorically, verily, ensure that His light will prevail. وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Even if the disbelievers dislike, Allah is Himself the originator of this light. But what is this light? This is a question that has indeed amazed philosophers and mystics for centuries and it's beyond a few moments. Suffice for us to say that the Quran states that when it comes to light, it is singular. When it comes to dhulumat, it's plural. Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila nur Allah is the guardian of those who, who are believers. He takes them from darkness, dhulumat is plural, but nur is singular, which means what? Which means there are no different places to seek the nur. The nur is one. There is one way to be illuminated by it. What is that way? This nur is the nur of iman, it's the nur of certainty, it's the nur of monotheism, it's the nur of tawheed. Question, the Quran says there are people who wish to extinguish the light of God. Those who are adamant to ensure that this light is extinguished. In which way? Of course, we know that Rasulullah and Nabi Al-A'zam Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam is one of the ways in which this great light, this illuminating light of God is spread. How? Ya ayyuha rasul inna arsannaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadheera wa da'iyan ila Allah bi idhnihi wa sirajan munira The Quran says the Prophet is a way in which this nur is indeed channeled. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's illuminating light comes through the Prophet. What else we find in this ayah? We find that after Allah speaks about the futile attempts of people to extinguish the light of God, He says, It is Allah who sent His Messenger to ensure that the entire creation of God are cognizant of this nur. Tell me, has this been materialized? Have we seen this spreading of the nur of Allah that the Quran has promised? Rasulullah came and he delivered the message brilliantly and immaculately. The theoretical message was delivered, the practical was delivered. But the state that we see today, people have not been able or not all of them are individuals who are under this particular guidance and nur. Therefore, in which capacity and in which way is this nur materialized fully? It can only be manifested and it is epitomized through Mahdi Hadhi Al Ummah wa Qa'imu Ali Muhammad Salawatullahi wa Salaamu Alayhi. That's why you find in our riwayat, in the dua, what do we say? As-salamu alayka ya nur Allah al-ladhi yahtadi bihi al-muhtadun. Imam al-Zaman is the light of God that people seek guidance through him. Imam Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajah al-Sharif is this way in which we, you and I, can be inspired by this unbelievable light of guidance. How many times do we hear about this verse being specific to the awaited Savior? They, they desire to put out the light of Allah with their mouths. But Allah will perfect His light. Depending on the verse that we see. That either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it, it doesn't really matter what these people are trying to do. Allah will perfect the outcome, the destiny. His light will come to this earth and spread itself, being the awaited Savior. This verse is the most outstanding verse of the Holy Quran 
in regards to the global concept of the establishment of the awaited Savior, Imam Ali Salatu Wasalam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Inna ma mathal al hayat al dunya kama anzalnahu min al sama." The similitude, the likeness of this world's life is just like water, which we send down from the cloud, and then the herbage grows on the earth, and the cattle will eat from it. From those rains, herbage grows, which by uh, animals and mankind eat. The world continues to move, just like the seasons continue to move, and the rains continue to fall. This is life. It continues on in these cycles of rain coming and making food for you and I, and we live out these cycles on a day-to-day -day basis. We will have ages and eras and lifetimes, and the world will continue, and dynasties will come and go, just like seasons come and go, and people will eat and people will continue until the world will shift. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hatta, until, and this is the important part of the verse, Hatta, Ida akhadatil ard zukhrufuha. Until when the earth puts on its golden raiment, its beauty, its adornments. Wazayyannat wa dhanna ahluha, annahum qadiruna alayha. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a period. What does that sound like to you and I? When we think about such a verse, the world will continue, but a time will come when the earth puts on its embellishments. If you look around the world today, and you see how, especially in the last 50 or 100 years, how the world has begun to put on its embellishments and its adornments. the earth at night from the satellites above and you see the whole cities lit up and whether you're looking at the states or you're looking at Europe or Asia the whole world is beautified it's adorned with all of its light Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about these sorts of issues at the end of time the earth will have become adorned beautified with its creation with how mankind have created lofty structures how the earth will be adorned and, and lit up at night then it continues and its people were then the ahluha and the qadiruna alayha and its people will think that they have power over it now if you lived 1400 years ago you couldn't think even if you were abu sufyan even if you were yazid you didn't think that you had power over the whole earth Day that people think that they have power over the movements of this earth. People think that they have power by manipulating the world today. That they can manipulate the world and make it putty in their hands and change it for the worse without any of us noticing it. Look at the way the Quran describes this. Now as a requisite to having power over the world, and people thinking, people thinking that they have power over the world, you need to have a global village, don't you? And thus, it couldn't have happened 500 years ago. It may not even have been able to happen 200 years ago. Only in an era now where we have a global village, where news and information can circumambulate the world within seconds. Can people take advantage of that apparatus to be able to destroy the world? The world putting on its embellishments, the world becoming beautified, the world shining in its electric grids. Once the world sees that people have power, or they think that they have power over the world, two signs of the end of times. What does the Quran say happens at that point? Our command comes by night or by day. Who is that command? Or what is the fulfillment and the manifestation of that command? Imam al Mahdi, Ajjallahu Ta'ala Faraj al Shari. Sahib al Amr, may Allah hasten his appearance. He comes by day or by night. Now, this is very interesting. So now we have two things. 
The first thing is that Allah Ta'ala is speaking about a global matter. It's not regionalized to the Middle East. It's not regionalized to Europe. The whole earth, people shall think that they have power and they're using it like puppets. At that point, when the earth is in this circumstance, our command comes to it. Now this command, as we stated, is referring to the Imam Ali Salam. Why do you think Allah Ta'ala says, it's coming by day or by night? Do you not see that when the command comes, in certain places it will be day, in certain places it will be night? If he comes on Friday at 12 o'clock in Mecca, knowing the global time zones, it will be 9 p.m. elsewhere in the earth. Allah says our command comes by night. It will be late Thursday night, early Friday morning, in certain places in the far west. And for them it will still be the early morning, it will be the rising of the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when mankind has come to the point of such disobedience, such arrogance that they think that they control the earth, affecting globally, be you in Canada or be you in New Zealand, that is when our command will come. Baqiyatullahi khayran lakum in kuntum mu'mineen. What Allah has in store for you is better for you if you are mu'mineen. Oh no, it's how, look how clear. Baqiyatullahi khayran. Yes, what Allah has in store, He is reserved is better for you if you are mu'min. Someone came to 60 Imam, he said, can we call Imam Al-Hujjah Amir Al-Mu'mineen? When he comes, can we say, Ya Amir Al-Mu'mineen? He said, no, only Ali ibn Abi Talib is Amir Al-Mu'mineen. No one else, no one else, yes? Then they said, so what do we call him? He said, call him Baqiyatullah, Allahu Akbar. As-salamu alayka ya Baqiyatullah fi ardi. Salams on you who Allah has in store for us, yes? When someone tells you, I have a surprise in store for you, how much do you wait for the surprise? What if Allah has a surprise for man, yes? And that's why when the 12th Imam comes, you know what Imam Sadiq says? He will stand by the Kaaba and say, Ana Baqiyatullah, yes? I am the one Allah had in store for all of you. اللهم كل بلية الهجة ابن الحسن صلواتك على Tabi 